Hi guys, Rich here, hope you are all good. So, very quick video on the SB actuator that we use for diverter valve applications. So, uh, generally, we use this one, which is the ARA636, or you can use the ARA635. So, the difference between the ARA635 and the ARA636 is simply... Uh, the 636 comes with an auxiliary lead, okay? So if you don't want the auxiliary lead, or say we had the ARA 635 out of stock, what you can do is you can still buy the ARA 636 and simply uh, remove the screw from here, take this off, open this up, and you can actually remove the connector on this side here. So if you follow this gray cable through, um, onto the connector here, you can actually remove this cable so it is then just a live neutral um, and uh, switch live cable on this side. All right, so that is the big difference between the ARA635 and the ARA636 is just literally the 636 comes with an auxiliary switch and an auxiliary switch lead. Okay, but you can remove this and you can remove the auxiliary switch if you really want to. Okay. So another thing I saw on the groups the other day, which I wanted to clarify as well, while I've got the cover off, is someone said uh, with the two-point diverter that what you need to do, if you want it to go the other way, you just wire the brown into the switch live instead of the black. Now, that's not the case. The brown is always the permanent live. The blue is always the neutral and the black is always the switch live on the SBs, okay? You don't wire these two the other way around on the two-point actuators, okay? So with the two-point actuators, they always motor back. So they're always permanently powered and when you, um, in, in, at the factory, they will always power clockwise on their own and when you switch live them, they power anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise, all right? If you want to change that, what you've probably never noticed is the two jumpers in this position here, okay? I don't know if you can see those. I will, um, I will zoom in on the video and just show you those now, okay? Those two little jumpers there, I'll try and uh, focus on that point, okay? Those two jumpers there, right? They, if you notice, they are in the vertical position. So they, the jumpers are going vertically. What you need to do, if you want this to um, power, uh, so in the standard, so when you've just got the brown attached, which is your permanent live, if you want it to be in the counterclockwise position and then motor clockwise instead of motoring anti-clockwise, you just need to switch these jumpers around so they're horizontal, okay? So they're vertical standard. If you switch those round so they run horizontally across the terminals, this will then power the other way, okay? And that's how you still use the black wire as your switch live, but you power the motor the other way. And not many people know that. If you read the manual, it is in the manual. Maybe it's not overly clear, but if you want to um, change the direction of the, the motor when you use the switch live, which is the black, then you just need to remove these jumpers and switch them around so they're horizontally. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually cut the video here and then I'm going to move the jumpers. I'm no way I'm going to do it on camera because I'm going to drop them and everything. Um, but I'm going to remove the jumpers. I'm going to put them back on the other way around and I'm going to show you how they should look. And if by magic, they're around the other way. So when they're round this way, like I said, when you hit the switch live, so you still keep the brown on permanent live, you keep the blue on neutral and the black um, as your switch live, it will now motor the other way. And that's with those jumpers in horizontally. So you can try that if you want. So if you, if you take the power off it, swap your jumpers over, put the power back on, do the switch live on the black, you'll see it will motor one way and then the other with, when you swap the jumpers around. Okay, so... I don't know why that information isn't vastly public, but it's there, okay? So you do not need to do 
switch live on the brown. You, the brown's always permanent live. You just need to change the jumpers inside here. Bear in mind, this is 230 volts in here when um, if, you, if you were to change them and you've already wired it, make sure you disconnect it before you change the wiring. But, um, but those jumpers are there to do that job. Okay, um, what else can I tell you about it? Um, oh, I know, there's a good one. Um, if you've got the auxiliary switch here, uh, this here is how you change the position of your auxiliary switch. So as standard, the auxiliary switch switching position is in the center. And if you move this green lever whichever way you want it, you can actually adjust um, where the switch point is of the auxiliary switch. So that's quite cool. Um, the other thing is, well, let me put that back on a minute. If you, um, when you get these out the box, they're normally in the middle position. So if I lock that back in place, so in, in normal mode, they're normally in the middle. Um, so if you want to put it onto an actuator and you've put it like, say you've put your actuator all the way across to its anti-clockwise position and you want it to actuate clockwise, what you can do is you can put these into the standard, into the manual mode position. When it's in the manual mode position, you can actually rotate the center cog. So you see like the little spline shaft down there. You can actually rotate that with a manual lever. So what you can do is you can put it all the way, even though the motor's locked in the mid position like so, and you can't move that. You can put it in manual, put it onto your actuator position, put your head on, um, and then screw your head in onto the, the white castle. I don't know what I've done with the oh, it's there. So the white castle, which is here, that goes on that way. So the castle goes into your, um, into the base of this like so. And then basically these little bits, these little lug bits here go um, down onto there and they lock into there like that, see? So, um, so, so like I said, if you had that all the way anti-clockwise and you turn this all the way anti-clockwise for instance, and then you put the actuator on, screw, put the screw through, and then power the power the valve. Um, you know, you could then actually turn your mixing valve to the mid position, lock it in, and then next time it actuated over to the clockwise, it'd be in the right place, or anti-clockwise. Um, yeah, clockwise or anti-clockwise, it'd be in the right place. So that's another thing just to note. Um, and the what else is there? Um, oh yeah, don't use these heads on any more than the DM32 valve. So um, if you if you choose an inch and a half or a two inch valve, you need to go up to a 30 second actuator or a 60 second actuator because the 15 second actuator uh, is not um, strong enough to drive the bigger valves. Okay, it will do everything up to a DM32, but it will not drive the bigger valve. So if you do go for an um, inch and a half or a two inch valve, so these are fine up to an inch and a quarter, um, but you, yeah, they will struggle. So you need a 30 second head or you need a 60 second actuator, you know, actuator. Um, is that it? Uh, I think that's about it. If you've, um, if you've got any questions about the, um, about the actuator, uh, whether that be wiring or anything else, hopefully I've covered everything that needs to be covered. But if you, um, if you do have any questions, please either put them on the video or send us, um, if you've got any general ESB questions, because obviously we're an ESB distributor for the UK, um, just drop us an email to sales at mwphs.co.uk. That's sales at mwphs.co.uk. Or like I said, just drop a drop a, a message in the video and um, we'll get back to you. Um, anyway, if you've liked the video, please um, put your thumbs up. And if you've not already, please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, just hit the bell icon and you'll be notified next time there is a video that we release like this. Um, and if uh, we are doing a paid section shortly, so we are doing a paywall um, for some of our more technical in-depth stuff. Um, this won't go on the pay channel at the moment. It might do in the future, but um, but we're going to do a paywall. Basically, you pay a monthly subscription to, the, to our, our um, paid side and you will get a load of technical content in that side for free, um, which uh, obviously if you pay for me to do those things, I'll spend more time doing more technical stuff um, and uploading it to that section. So uh, so there will be a membership um, area. 
Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, uh, like I said, put your thumbs up on the channel. And um, I've been Richard, and thanks very much for watching.